Yesterday, during the course of this show, a decision was made public that Ron Stevens had been extended for a year and named permanent superintendent of Berkeley County Schools. He had been interim uh, superintendent of Berkeley County Schools, and he was approved by a three to two margin among the Board of Education, with the two no votes being that of uh, Board President Patrick Murphy or Pat Murphy and Melissa Power. Uh, Melissa Power joins us via telephone this morning. On short notice, I might add, and Melissa, I do appreciate you carving out some time this morning to do this and make this call. Good morning, and thank you for being with us. Good morning, Rob. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Uh, can you tell me about the search process and then the ultimate decision to name the uh, superintendent from the field of those who had already been interim superintendent, Ron Stevens? Yeah, sure. So we started back in January per code. We can't we can't start until January uh, of the year that we're searching to um, begin discussions on what we're looking for, how you know, and where we should place ads, um, and how we're going to actually conduct in the interview process. Uh, we started that in January. Had several meetings um, over the course of of the last few months. Um, very extensive, and we had uh, a select number of individuals from our central office that facilitated that um, those many number of, of meetings. So, I mean, it, it's been a long and, and strenuous process. Um, long nights. Um, we definitely had um, debates back and forth, and I can classify them as debates we were never – uh, contentious with one another. I can tell you that we worked very well in, in um, discussions about what um, each candidate we interviewed uh, had in strengths, weaknesses, and ultimately it came down to Ron Stevens being the one who was selected. So it was a three to two vote. Can you tell me why yeah. you were one of the two no votes? Um. So the best thing I can tell you right at the moment is, um, you know, it was a no for me. I felt that there was another individual that um, would be a better fit for the position. However, Superintendent Stevens is our superintendent, and I support uh, the position that he holds. So uh, irrespective of how I voted, I wanted to make sure that he knew um, and also the other board members knew that I was not going to take my no and then just, you know, be negative, you know, for, for however long his, his contract would end up being. And then through, um, you know, back and forth with, with things in conversation during our executive sessions, uh, we landed on one year. So um, for the tenure that, you know, Mr. Stevens has with us, whether that's one year or even longer, um, you know, he will if if he so chooses and if if we choose next year to extend uh he will get the respect that his position is owed a no vote isn't always a no vote isn't always a no vote uh, they they are in different oh. shades was was yours a vote more so because you thought the other person was more qualified or more whatever and, and but but Ron was also this guy was just a little or, or woman was just a bit more or did you feel like Ron was just not the guy for the job you know, that's an interesting question. So uh, what I can tell you is all of us had our top two. <laughs> um, and there would be one day where you would be in a conversation, um, in executive session, and I was, and I'm only talking about myself, um, where I would sit there and think, okay, this person is more qualified. And then the next morning after thinking about all of the different points that other members had made during that, that meeting, I would wake up the next morning and go, okay, well, maybe this person is the better. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was so incredibly difficult and hard because we, we asked so many different questions of each candidate. We asked um, different questions of each other. Um, and how, you know, the other individuals saw things. So we absolutely did um, do our due diligence in looking for a candidate. Um, I know someone asked in the, the um, Facebook chat if the board did a national search. We chose not to do a national search. We chose to, based on the communities 
um, feedback, we chose to keep it more local. Um, there was we advertised in many different uh, on many different platforms. So those um, that applied were given an interview. I think except for for one individual. So that was it. Bill, yeah, how many uh, candidates uh, actually applied, Melissa? Uh, so that's an interesting thing. I'm not sure if I'm out absolutely able to say, but I can tell you it was less than 10 individuals that applied. I'm, um, I'm, I'm a little taken aback with the mystery that's been surrounding the Board of Education. Uh, this is all yeah. public information. You should be able to um, give us that. Yes, yeah, so this is where we know that there's, there is public information that, that can be gleaned from this, and this is one of those I don't want to get ahead of, of any sort of uh, announcement that needs to get done. Or, or taken um, if you know you're at, and I know you're pushing me so um, freedom of freedom freedom of information if I can talk this morning mm -hmm. um, there were there were six candidates um, and it, unfortunately I you know to what to to go to, down to you know whether they are white or yeah. other. I mean, because I, I know I'm seeing that question also pop up in the chat. Um, I, you know, that <laughs> yeah. I, can't, I can't force someone outside of a, a certain racial or, or um, uh, other demographic apply. Um, I can tell you that there was only one person that did not meet the qualifications per our state code and therefore was not, uh, was not interviewed. Um, all of the other candidates that applied were interviewed. Okay, so the the key that I'm what I'm hearing is that one we did a local search, uh, certainly not a national search. Uh, by definition, well, we did, and, and I'll interrupt you just for a second. There there were national um, avenues that we did publicize in. However, it was more focused in the papers, uh, okay. like the newspapers and, and that sort of thing, that was more local. Um, but I believe there was one one or two other platforms that at least had the advertisement that we were looking. So okay. my uh, mistake on this one, and I thank Damon Wright for, for correcting me on that. Okay, uh, fair enough. Uh, did, the, did you use a search committee or do, do everything in-house? We did not. Uh, utilize um, any outside uh, individual except for uh, Mr. O or Dr. O'Call. He did it more in an advisory capacity. Uh, we utilized uh, Elaine Bobo and um, uh, Dr. Schooley for advertising. Uh, that kept costs down. We wanted to make sure that we were the ones doing the search and we were the ones that received the applications and meant that it was the Board of Education members that reviewed each applicant um, and not uh, an agency or anything like that. I was surprised that the uh, the initial contract is just for a single year, one year. Mm -hmm. uh, is mm -hmm. that common? It, yeah, actually, there. Yeah, there's actually several counties in, in West Virginia that do one-year contracts. Um, so, you know, we're, we're not out of the realm of abnormal in that sense. Um, and it seemed to be something that was agreeable by the rest of the, 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 the board members. I mean, all of us were in agreement for that. So, What, what message, message does that send to, the, uh, uh, to Mr. Stevens and also the community as a whole that they, we're hiring you but only for one year? Realize you can be renewed. I realize that. So, oh. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I would like to think that people are of the understanding that this was a very difficult and strenuous process, but that we are trying to facilitate an environment where we're not, um, you know, one of the recent complaints that we've, we've received from a lot of people were, you know, in previous years, you know, there was someone who came in for, that was not from our county that, um, many individuals thought he did a great job, and there were many individuals that thought he did not do a great job. And, um, you know, this is, this is where we're trying to leverage, you know, good decision-making with um, what we think should be, you know, something to, to pursue down the road. We, I, I don't know if long-term contracts are something that I would 
necessarily want. Um, you know, we have at will employment. So, um, you know, this is, this is not necessarily at will employment so much as it is. It's, it's, uh, maybe a better version of, of that from for a superintendent's position. He also let you know as a program note tomorrow on the program, Jackie Long, vice president of the Board of Education, will be in studio. Damon Wright will be on the phone. They were two yes votes along with Michael Murphy. And then on Friday, the new superintendent, Ron Stevens, will be with us at uh, 8 o'clock. So we'll get uh, all viewpoints uh, in, in some form or fashion before this is all said and done. Pat Murphy, as I said, the president of the board was not available today or uh, tomorrow either. Uh, Melissa, in regards to the salary, 185 is the number that I saw published. Is that accurate? Yes. yes. I think the, that is the, the accurate salary. The previous uh, superintendent, Patrick Murphy, not the same as Pat Murphy. Uh, Patrick Murphy was a little over 200, I think. What was he, around 210, 205? Something like that, yeah. Okay. Uh, so was was this uh, salary offered at 185 as uh because it was not a national search and you didn't need to worry about being competitive with other parts of the country? Or was this something that was intentional because we thought the last superintendent was just making too much and we needed to cut that back? Uh, I can tell you that for me, when we were looking at the salary for um, superintendent and we were looking at the state of West Virginia specifically, uh, we felt that... I, I felt that 185 was um, a good number um, versus, you know, what had previously been done of well over 200,000. I know that market, you know, if you're looking in the market of superintendents across the, the United States, you know, are we below average? Yes, but we're also below average when it comes to paying our teachers. We're below average when it comes to, you know, paying our, um, our other uh, support staff. So, you know, I mean, it, that's, if we're under the national, then we're under the national. Were you, from are, the top down. are you able to discuss the ranges that you folks negotiated on in terms of the low end and the high end on this? Actually, this was, I, I don't know how much we can, I can talk about negotiation, but I can tell you this wasn't a point that was highly contested. Okay, very good. Uh, in in regards to the one year contract, at some mm -hmm. point along the way, uh, you'll have to make a decision as to whether that contract uh, should be renewed. And Mr. Yeah. Stevens will have to have discuss whether he wants it to be renewed as well. What criteria might you use along the way that will sway you as a no voter that that contract should be extended? Well, part of that's going to probably be coming up here in the next year. Uh, I know that we're going to have to work with uh, Superintendent Stevens to discuss goals, uh, you know, his goals, as well as what we're desiring for our county for the next school year. So that's something that is probably going to be a matter of discussion for, for next year, you know, the next school year. Um, and unfortunately, I can't give you that information because we haven't had those conversations yet. Okay. And can you tell me just kind of as, as a person who is you're new to the board, you were uh, yep. a, a citizen who was observing the board previously at education in Berkeley yep. County. Can you tell me some things as a citizen you might look at as a school system and discuss whether or not you thought it was being well led or not? Uh, you know, this is the, the interesting piece. I can tell you that from um, my interactions that I've had with many individuals, both that work with Berkeley County schools, as well as those uh, that do not and have been observers, the the common takeaway that I have seen is that this is one of the best functioning and uh, working uh, boards of education that they have seen in a number of years. And um, they are happy to see us uh, in our schools. They're happy to see us asking questions. They're happy to see us, you know, um, not being a, a, quote, rubber stamp um, for everything. And uh, they love the fact that, that there are times where we disagree, but we don't take that from, you know, one topic to the next or um, have any sort of like animosity toward one another. And, and I can tell you that from where I'm sitting, that's one of the, the things that I am grateful for, for, for this particular um, set of individuals that we have on the board right now. It, it functions better than what it has ever done. 
um, in my opinion, that I have seen in a number of years. Bill? Yeah. Uh, looking ahead for the next year or the next couple of so years down the road, are, are, you, uh, are you looking for Mr. Stevens to basically keep the trains running, or are you looking for Mr. Stevens to do something that's innovative out of the box that would push, push us to the next dimension? Well, I mean, we're growing, so we've got to, irrespective of whether it was Mr. Stevens or, or anybody else, we, we needed somebody who was going to, um, you know, provide that arena for stability, but also in, in, that, in that way, you know, get us to a place where we are growing. We are, you know, maintaining some level of competitiveness. We've got um, a need for increased STEM focus, uh, in my opinion, uh, and that's something that I know we've um, you know, we've discussed over the, you know, last year, there's um, increases of, of wanting to um, work with students who are going to be graduating and what that looks like for their future and, and see if there's, you know, what what students are, uh, we can grow into being teachers. Um, there are there are many different places that we can grow um, as are as a school system, and um, I believe that with the individuals that we currently have on the board and um, with Superintendent Stevens, we have a decent chance of really exploring what that looks like. Melissa well, Powers, our guest on the program. Before I let you go, I want to take you off the subject of the superintendent and bring you back to school safety uh, for a yeah. moment here. Uh, I, I understand there'll be three additional, is it three additional resource officers for the schools, Melissa? So what we've done is approved for three additional school resource officers uh, to uh, be hired at some point. What that looks like and how that works, we're still investigating. Um, we're pulling that money from the reserve fund that we have. Um, in order to do that because we feel that safety is is paramount right now and we need to need to have some level of focus on that um, that that is um, you, you know this is this is the the time to do it we've got the budget that is you know up for discussion and you know it'll be publicized here soon and so you know perfect timing to uh, really look at what our numbers are and what we can and cannot do. Um, and school safety has been something that has been discussed, I know, throughout you know my tenure um, as a board member, and I'm not the only individual who has had that discussion. I know Jackie Long has been on, on the program and has also voiced that there's been conversations, and I know uh, other members of the board have also had their own conversations as well. So this isn't, and, and collectively too, because we've got several pieces of security uh, measures that we're going to be implementing with the bond. So, I mean, this is this has been an ongoing conversation and will likely be just an ongoing conversation through, um, you know, the rest of, you know, our lives, because this is, this is something that evolves, um, you know, 50 years ago, we didn't necessarily think about, you know, safe school entrances. Now that's, that is a thing that we're, we're working toward. Um, you know, I don't know where technology will take us in the next few, um, you know, few decades, but, you know, I'm pretty sure that 50 years down the road when we're talking about to Board of Education, me you know, members, we're, we're going to be discussing, uh, you know, security measures and, and how we're keeping our schools and our children and staff safe. We have, you say, three new SROs. Uh, we, I think we had six before. Is that correct? So you're up to nine? Is that the right have, number? No, we have four. We have four. Uh, and then adding the three, there will be seven. Seven. Seven total. Very good. Melissa, I can't thank you enough for doing this on short notice. You have my uh, eternal appreciation on that. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank, thank you so much. Have a great day. Thanks, Melissa. Yep, you too.